Five days after Rio Tinto pulled out of its agreement with Chinalco, the dust has far from settled. In interviews today, China's peak steel body has denounced the BHP Rio tie-up as monopolistic. It's also threatening to look elsewhere for iron ore and has found a powerful ally in Japan. Desley Coleman reports. The failed deal between Rio Tinto and Chinalco has cooled the once warm relationship between the two companies. And now sparks are set to fly in the steel industry. Today, the Japan Iron and Steel Federation said it would oppose the $145 billion iron ore joint venture between Rio Tinto and BHP Billiton. I think that they're going to push pretty hard. That Why should they lie down? Um, they've watched uh, this deal um, unravel in different ways. Why not try themselves to push it down? The Japanese steel body has vowed to fight against the tie-up. In a statement, it said while it takes the form of a joint production venture, it is, in effect, an anti-competitive move. The Rio and BHP joint venture would see 70% of the world's iron ore controlled by two players rather than three. Because they want to divide the iron ore producers. They, they feel bitter about the high price rises that they had over the last couple of years. They finally... Um, expecting lower prices thanks to the commodity price uh, crash, at least until recently. Um, and now this is a big threat to their continued low prices. So I think that they're going to push very hard. Analysts say the iron ore industry is already highly consolidated. The alternative is really to go and source iron ore a lot further away in places like Brazil. So I think um, at the end of the day, um, the BHP and Rio are still in the box seat. I would have to think if they're uh, uh, joining forces on the production side of things that uh, you know, they'll be trying to flex their muscle from a pricing perspective. So I guess from that we'd, we'd be looking towards you know, potentially higher iron ore prices in the future. That's clearly a concern for Chinalco and it seems the Chinese more generally are taking the rejection personally. Media reports in China are calling Rio Tinto a dishonourable woman and the nation will have to take more precautions in future deals. In the past, China's iron and steel enterprises had money, yet were afraid of not being able to purchase iron ore. But now we have money, and if Australia doesn't want to sell to us, we can turn to others. But Asian expert and former editor of The Economist, Bill Emmett, says the Rio Chinalco failure is unlikely to discourage future investment in Australia. They want to invest in resources all over the world, and Australia is one of those destinations. So I don't think this is going to turn them off Australia. I think it's going to make them very careful about big headline-grabbing Investments. Which could see Australia's second tier miners benefit. The emerging players, for example, in the Australian iron ore space, particularly in Western Australia, that provide you know, diversity of supply to the Chinese, I think they're going to be looked towards uh, a lot of keen Chinese interests. James Phillips is a merger and acquisitions lawyer for Minter Ellison. Recently back from a trip to China, he's advising his clients to consider alternative investment strategies like unincorporated joint ventures. For the Chinese, if they get uh, a minority interest in an underlying asset um, which becomes a mining project, they actually are entitled, as a matter of law, they're the owner of their percentage of the offtake. So it's helping them secure a source of supply. It also avoids some of the corporate issues that emerge when you come in through a listed company structure, regulatory issues. But as with most breakups, it may take a little while before China makes its next move.